Zip AI just secretly rolls out Graffiti, a temporal knowledge-based framework that is a complete game changer because it implements all the best knowledge management practices all in one framework. Now, before you waste time with traditional RAG systems that break with evolving data, watch this video. Even though your vector database might be lightning fast, it's still static. It's useless when information changes over time. So in this video, I'm going to expose to you what is Graffiti, how does Graffiti work, what is the difference between temporal knowledge graphs and traditional RAG systems and how you can benefit from a framework that tracks both when events happened and when information was discovered. So watch this video until the end. We're also going to incorporate a streaming chatbot and show you how to implement this in your um, AI agent frameworks and unlock the full potential of your AI agents. Um, it's amazing when you can like you can do semantic searching and all that sort of stuff with it. Yeah. You can look at you get the pretty graph or the, you know that thingy how everything's interlinked, which I come through graffiti, I guess. That's cool. That's my so many fun to. things. I wish I had more time. Dang it! If you've been using traditional rag system or retrieval augmented generation, then you know that it was handling static data, data that was imported at a certain period of time. It does not take account for changing data or data that evolves over time and that's where graffiti comes in so if you've never heard about zep it's a platform that allows you to integrate memory into your ai agents they handle all the memory management on the back end and they give you a really scale as you go pricing model now they also have an open source framework, which is Graffiti, and they provide the um, instructions to create your temporal knowledge base. Okay, now You might be asking, why do we need a temporal knowledge base system or a knowledge base that accounts for time? It's very simple, my friend. With traditional RAG, you're just taking a document and you're chunking them, essentially turning them into numerical representations that can be fed into a vector database and then it can be searched appropriately, right? Now, here's the problem is that it can't handle contradictions or evolving information. Customer loves a product in January, but then hates the product in March. Graffiti Framework solves the problem by having temporal knowledge graph system okay so you can imagine this system to be like a vector store rag and also time aware system okay so it has all these components your ai agent can not only store data but it can store data with relationships and time it can also retrieve augment and generate from that data set based on the time component as well. So it adds more context, more meaning, reduces all the hallucination that everybody is talking about, okay? So it's important for the knowledge graph to understand both facts that are true at different times. When asked, does the customer like our product? The answer includes the temporal context. So it understands what's the latest and greatest information coming from that customer. It builds temporal aware knowledge graphs, it tracks evolving relationships over time, processes both structured and unstructured data. Graffiti actually derives from the limitations of traditional RAG because in traditional RAG, it simply chunks and retrieves it based on vector similarity. And in real world, you know that relationships evolve, you know that data modeling evolves, and you might have heard about people talking about agentic RAG, then there's SAG, then there's all kinds of RAG implementations, but it's all stemming from the same root cause problem. It's called data modeling, okay? Because we understand the relationships change over time, it evolves, the data models evolve over time, we need a system that can also evolve with the data. That's where temporal knowledge graphs comes in. It ensures the data models are flexible, the data is unstructured and structured at the same time. So I'm going to dive more into the custom entity modeling in a little bit, which is going to be helpful for you to understand when you're developing knowledge graph memory systems. The magic really happens in Graffiti's triple layer architecture. You have episode subgraphs, which stores conversation and data, which is the base data layer. Then you have semantic entity subgraph, which connects related entities with 
time context. And you might be wondering, well, MTS, there's a lot of terms here. Don't worry, my friend, we're going to dive into a uh, practical implementation so you can actually see what that looks like. What is entity? What is episodes? What is relationships? Or how one entity is connected to another entity or how you or your agents can derive meaning from this kind of data set. The community subgraph basically groups the entities together and then sends it off to your AI agents or chatbots, etc., so that it can retrieve the relevant information uh, together with the right context. For example, the Freakonomics radio show episodes could be thought of as a community subgraph. It's basically chunking up, and then within that context you have uh, different entities it mentions Gavin Newsom in that podcast so Gavin Newsom is an entity and then there's other entities could be Kamala Harris or maybe California maybe coffee all these are entities but they're all kind of grouped together under uh, one community if there is any kind of relationship if there's any kind of mentions of these entities and then when your AI agent retrieves that information it gets all these chunked up information gets a nice juicy amount of information that it can use to uh, basically provide uh, a better answer a more relevant answer a contextually aware answer and thus reduce the hallucinations last layer of the architecture is the time component and unlike traditional vector database that just stores static embeddings graffiti maintains bi-temporal awareness tracking both when events occurred and when information was added to the system the temporal knowledge base data is stored in a graph format so it looks like this and i'm going to also put the link to this github repository provided by getsep go ahead and explore some of the examples that they have i'm actually going to go through a small quick start implementation with you they also have an mcp server that you can deploy for your cloud desktop to use a memory okay and it's absolutely open source there's other memory management uh, platforms like mem0 so definitely check these out i'm going to make more videos on how to use and implement these knowledge systems for your ai agent so make sure you like subscribe and hit that notification bell to get updated every time i drop a video on this topic and let's keep up with all this information so our ai agents have the best memory systems available to them now let's talk about some of the benefits of temporal knowledge graphs. Uh, they do something called incremental updates. So unlike batch oriented approaches where you batch a group of documents together and send it off into a vector database, Graffiti integrates new data episodes uh, immediately without requiring recomputation of the entire graph. This makes it ideal for scenarios with constantly changing information. Graffiti also uses a hybrid retrieval capability, so it combines semantic embeddings, keyword search, and graph traversals to achieve low latency queries without relying on LM summarization. This hybrid approach delivers more comprehensive results than single method retrieval system. And this is my favorite one, the custom entity modeling, because Graffiti supports flexible ontology creation and developer-friendly entities through straightforward Pydantic models. So as a developer, you can design your custom ontologies or your data models based on the business contact. For example, if you have a chat conversation of an agent, you can provide a naming convention and then have a series of uh, these chat conversations uh, sorted and organized by time for your business and then feed it to the AI agent so the AI agent knows, okay, what information is relevant at what point of time, how they're grouped together, all these relationships so you can define it or you can let the agents define it so you can be structured or unstructured at the same time that's the beauty of the custom entity definitions you can define your own path now this is the million dollar question when to use graffiti should you even worry about graffiti at this point it is certainly a big component of the ai agent application because uh, as you know when ai agents learn from interaction it gets a better and better and autonomously it can then execute complex tasks and that's the problem with the current AI agents because they hallucinate too much they need to be trained on the function calls they need to be trained on the knowledge base everything is 
takes time. It needs a lot of human involvement. But when you have a memory system that is in place to capture specific training data for the agents to evolve over time, it makes things a lot more easier and smoother to manage. You don't need to implement um, this in all your applications. You still have to consider the use case, what you're trying to solve. You should always take an approach that is step by step. Start from simple and then move to complex. You can start with traditional RAG and a basic memory. When it starts to hallucinate, when it falls apart, start integrating more complex layers, okay? There is no need to start with graffiti. There's a cost aspect. There's also the speed component as well that you need to optimize for. And I'm all about hands-on implementation. So we're going to be practicing with our own knowledge graph memory system and uh, the only thing you need is python neo 4j it's a database that's suited for storing knowledge graph data and then you need your open ai api key this is good for lm inferencing and embedding okay uh currently it supports open ai and gemini and this is because they have a pretty good structured output function so the next thing you're going to need is a Neo4j database. So they have a fully managed plan that you can get started for free. And they have uh, the next level up is the professional plan. Now, if you want to fully manage the servers yourself, you can download the open source version. So when you get into the database, you're going to be able to populate uh, your knowledge graphs and you're also going to be able to see it. You don't have to build any kind of additional tech. Everything's kind of pre-built for you. You just have to uh, basically just have everything in one place. So if you're here for the first time, you're going to click on instances and you're going to spin up a new instance. Uh, it's going to create a small database for you that's absolutely free. And uh, you're going to use a username. I think the default is Neo4j. And they're going to give you a password for the first time. And then also uh, you're going to need the connection URI, okay? Those three things you're going to need. And then you're also going to need your OpenAI API key for all the embeddings. We're now going to start working on our Google Colab notebook. You're going to basically run all these steps right here. In step three, you're going to configure the environment variables. These are basically your API keys and your Neo4j username, password, and the URI. And don't worry, the keys are stored in your environment. So once you've successfully plugged everything in, you can then initialize the graffiti client. And then step five, we're going to define the knowledge graph tools. So this is very important because when we're creating AI agents, we now need to provide tools for the AI agents to uh, interact with this knowledge base. We have add text episode, add JSON episode, search knowledge graph. This is the minimum amount of tools your agent needs to interact with the database. You can actually hook it up with an MCP as well and uh, talk to it in that way. If you want, the MCP is going to give you a wide range of tools. So for a list of all the tools available, check out their MCP folder and the source code, and you're going to get a lot of ideas from that as well. Then step six, we're going to create our AI agent. And then the AI agent, we've specified the tools that we're going to use. If you're going to use MCP based agent, you can just plug in their MCP server and then you can interact with it just off the bat. And uh, we're going to use GPT 4.0 model. Now, if you're curious what framework I'm using, I'm using Pydantic agent framework. Uh, but I'm still using OpenAI. The great thing with Pydantic, it lets you be model agnostic. You can switch out the models uh, to gauge the performance. Okay, it's just your preference. Some people prefer other models like Gemini. Some people prefer uh, perhaps some of the open source models if you're squeamish about that stuff. And this is some optional seed sample data. And I just took it straight from the example code that they have provided. And you can send this off to the uh, knowledge graph and then it's going to store this data. So you can quickly test if uh, you can uh, basically interact with the database in that way. We're going to then create our chat interface and the chat interface is going to uh, provide a really simple streamlined backend kind of view how the agent is talking to us. And, uh, you know, it's just going to stream the responses one by one. And you can also gauge the time it takes for it to respond back without any front end interference. And the last bit of code is going to run so that we can actually now talk to this agent. The agent is going to respond with a couple of things it has access to. 
you can already see that I have some sample data in the uh, knowledge base. I want to retrieve some of the information that's in the knowledge base so we can actually start asking about this data. So I can say something like, tell me about Kamala Harris. And uh, you can see real time, it's thinking. And then it's going to respond with an answer. You can ask some other questions to basically gauge how the data is stored. As you know, the data is stored in a format where it can understand how close and far apart one entity is from another. Uh, and that's what we're seeing uh, that it can do right here. If we say who is closely related to Kamala, and it's going to say Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom, he's the governor of California and was previously the lieutenant governor of California. Given the political landscape, he he has likely worked with Kamala Harris during her tenure as attorney general. You can see some of the relationships that each entity has and uh, in how they're interconnected. So a Neo4j uh, cloud database actually gives you different kinds of views that you can explore uh, to understand this relationship under the query and the explore feature. One of the things I like is the episode mentioned. So if I'm having some chat conversations and I've mentioned my name or I'm involved in those chat conversations, it points to that entity that uh, is being referred here. See, all the chat conversations are pretty much community subgraphs, which are chunked up. So the more things you bring up during the conversations, it's going to populate all these additional entities and notes, understand how close and far apart they are. And that entire thing is going to provide contextual meaning to the AI agents. You could almost think of it as a neural network for our brain. So that's literally what it looks like. You can add topics and entities uh, into this uh, knowledge graph yourself. I can say, well, Eric loves fishing. It's going to understand all these are specific entities within that body of text. And instantly you can see that this stores a relationship just like that. Now, I haven't defined the data model here in my code, but you can define it however you want. Right in this case, it's just a concept, but you can also just create chat conversation as the data model. Now, if I add additional context here, Eric is married to Mary. So it's going to record that information. Then I can also say Steve is Mary's ex. So now you can see that they are also related nodes. And every entity is going to have their unique identifier. So as the knowledge base grows, it's going to understand more and more about an entity that you keep referring to. If we start talking more about Eric or any of these entities, it's going to develop more nodes around it more relationships, more contextual meaning. My friend, hopefully this video was helpful for you to understand temporal knowledge graphs, why you need it, how it's different from traditional RAG systems. And if you want to get started on the code that I just showed you, I'm going to put a link to the description absolutely for free. If you want to push yourself a little bit further, take the five day AI agent challenge to gauge where you are in your journey. Also, if you're an AI agency or a serious entrepreneur and you're tired of the hyped up YouTube videos and the scattered automation templates and GitHub repository, and you just want the practical sauce to build, ship, and impress your clients, we pieced the puzzle together and curated the best tech available so you don't have to go out there and start scrambling for answers. We got what you need to so book a call and let's give you a game plan and uh, let's get the ball rolling. 99% of people don't know what they're doing with AI and, uh, you can get a head start, okay? And also, don't forget to make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get notified every time I drop a new video. And uh, we're coming to a point where non-tech people can build AI agents without complex coding or any kind of hard-coded frameworks. Just pick your MCPs and go. So the fast agent framework is gonna be really helpful for you to understand that. And you know what's better than using somebody else's MCP is when you can create your own. So I made a video. Uh, so you can build your first custom MCP server with just 10 lines of code and in just 10 minutes. This is MTI signing off. Don't forget to unleash the full potential of your AI agents. Peace.